the matter of Shakahola and the growth of cult activities in the nation, Mr. Ruto is as much a suspect as is all the cult pastors from Shakahola and beyond. He owes the people of Kenya an explanation before he purports to be trying to solve the problem. Two, the so-called pastors are the people who set up the so-called sanctuary at Ruto's former official residence in Karen as the deputy president. They did not stop there. These so-called pastors proceeded to deliver prophecies and promise miracles about how Ruto would perform as a president. Three, these cultic pastors were among the people who supposedly sanctified State House when Ruto arrived there, pretending to be holier than, than every other Kenyan. They proceeded to pro prophesy how great his regime would be. Four, these so-called pastors have organized mega prayer rallies attended by so-called prayer warriors that include Mr. Ruto, Mr. Rigadi Gachagua, and their spouses, supposedly to sanctify the land. They ended up defiling the land. Five, these so-called pastors aided the introduction of mandatory fasting that started in 2015 at the DP's residence in Karen and which have been carried over to State House where everyone is compelled to fast every Wednesday regardless of their faith, effectively making State House essentially a Shakahola annex. Six. Sometime in May 2022, Mr. Ruto's family claimed to have prayed for impure borehole water at their current residence and turned it into clean when a purification machine had failed. We see no difference between this claim and the outrageous ones made by cut pastors like performing fake miracles and extorting money from believers with the calls like Tumambegu ya miatatu kumi or fast until you meet Christ. Seven, the cult leaders are behind the decision by Ruto to establish a faith diplomacy office where he has gone ahead to provide a list of 100 members to be recruited in the Public Service Commission as intercessors supposedly to pray for counties and the government. Nobody knows the identity, the qualifications of the so-called intercessors, how they were identified and where they, they fit in a government where religion and state are separate entities. Eight, Ruto is the leader of the cult movement disguised as Christianity in Kenya. Ruto, Gachagua, and their families must tell Kenyans when and how they knew these cult leaders and what they knew about them. Nine, Ruto and Gachagua must tell Kenyans how much these so-called pastors contributed to their 2022 campaign. How many times have the so-called pastors accessed a state house since the start of this regime? Ten, as we stated at the start, Ruto must know he has no powers to appoint a judicial commission of inquiry, so that option is out. Eleven, 
we are all aware that judicial commissions of inquiry have been the tool of choice whenever the government has something to hide, like you believe Ruto does now. Twelve, Parliament must swing into action, come up with a select committee, and get to the roots of the cultic activities in the country and the abuse of religion for political gain. Thirteen, Parliament must help us establish whether the deaths at Shakahola were acts of rogue pastors, human sacrifices, or body organ trade, and who the beneficiaries were. Fourteen, the DCI may have swung into action late, but since they did, they have been doing a great job in Chakahola. They should be allowed to do their job without in their inter interference. Fifteen, the current blanket restrictions